Well, hey guys, what's up? Today I wanted to talk all about cellulite. Um, there are many new procedures out there in the realm of body contouring that are very popular and you know hyped up on the internet and on TV and ads. So I get a lot of questions. Do any of these things actually work? Um, and can they help? Or what the heck can I do to get rid of cellulite? Um, and so I thought I would do a video today just addressing all of those, all of those interventions and procedures and, and what I think of them. And cellulite. Um, cellulite is a very pervasive cosmetic concern. It affects probably 80 to 90 percent of women. So if you're a woman, <laughs> there's a chance, there's a very good chance that you have cellulite lurking on your body somewhere that you detest and probably squeeze and stare at um, sometimes in the mirror. Um, so welcome to the club. Um, I think we all, we all, most of us have a little bit of it somewhere that, that we hate. Um, and the exact reason why cellulite occurs is not entirely known, to be honest with you. Um, you know, it has nothing to do with um, being overweight necessarily. It does not mean that you are overweight. It does not mean that you have too much fat. It doesn't mean that your diet is poor. It doesn't mean that you're out of shape. Um, the causes of cellulite are, you know, a lot of them are theorized, but we really don't have a solid understanding of why it occurs. Um, so our fatty tissues um, that are really important for protecting our muscles and our organs, um, they're, they're right underneath the deep layer of our skin, the dermis. And the fat, the fat cells and the fat tissue is kind of, kind of anchored there by this, by this net, by this, by this dense fibrous connective tissue netting, almost like a big fish net, okay? And that netting um, anchors the the fat there and keeps it in place so that it can properly cushion cushion our our, uh, our muscles and organs. And that mesh work, it seems like those little those little fibrous fat anchors can kind of pull um, at various angles and result in the appearance of the fat kind of bulging up. And that's what gives you that dimpled appearance, almost like the surface of an orange peel um, of cellulite, or a peau d'orange, it's called. Um, pardon my French. <laughs> um, you know, there have been many radiologic studies looking at the actual appearance of cellulite to try and figure out why it happens. And that um, fibrous net, that fibrous uh, fish net, um, it, those those little anchors can be oriented either um, perpendicular to the skin surface, parallel, or at a 45 degree angle. And for whatever reason, in women uh, who suffer from cellulite and, and cellulite uh, afflicted areas of the body, there seem to be a higher proportion of the uh, meshwork fibers being oriented perpendicularly. Um, so that makes a little sense if they're tugged on, you know, you can imagine that that the underlying fat, you know, probably kind of buoys up as a result, bulges out and gives that uneven appearance. Women who have had multiple pregnancies are more likely to be afflicted by cellulite, uh, simply by virtue of the estrogens and, and what have you of the hormones of pregnancy. Also being on an oral birth control pill for a long period of time uh, can also over time contribute to cellulite, it is thought. Um, again, really not a whole lot of solid understanding of the pathophysiology or the disease process of cellulite. It also seems as though um, people who smoke, tobacco smokers, um, are more likely to have to have cellulite than those who don't. Um, so, you know, that seems to be a risk factor for more problematic cellulite, um, among many, many other things. So if you need, if you're a smoker and you need just one more little motivating factor to, to encourage you to quit, that would be another one, um, you know, cellulite. <laughs> while the appearance, while having cellulite and the appearance of cellulite has, does not mean that you are overweight or out of shape or don't have enough muscle or body mass. Um, things that can, it can actually improve the appearance of cellulite are being active and having good underlying muscle tone. Um, this achieves two things. First of all, it just reduces the total amount of fat uh, in the body, so there's less to bulge, bulge up. And then what it also does is that by building the muscle tissues underneath, um, so for example, the gluteus muscle, uh, for people who do, do squats, for example, 
um, that kind of fills up some of that space, spreads out that fatty tissue a little bit, so it doesn't, it, it can't buoy, buoy up to the surface of the skin and bulge out as much. So really just space filling by building good muscle, muscle tissue can help. It also, um, and also exercises and strength training can be helpful for, for long term, it's thought, for improving the appearance of cellulite, really um, just by increasing blood flow and metabolism to the area and facilitating just really healthy tissue biology. Again, these are all theories as to why cellulite occurs and, you know, things that help it and, and make it worse. But if you're watching this video, chances are you want to know how can I get rid of it? I don't care what causes it. I just don't want it to be there, okay? So liposuction is the invasive uh, treatment that is probably the most effective for improving the appearance of cellulite, but it's really hit or miss, okay? Um, liposuction um, involves removing just some of the excess fat de deposits in the skin. But if you think about it, it can't really change the architecture of, of the skin and of that fibrous tissue network. So um, there is a risk with liposuction of really just creating surface inconsistencies and dimples and irregularities that are more prominent and unusual appearing. So um, if it is done properly um, and conservatively, sometimes it can subtly improve the appearance of cellulite. Um, and it's probably one of the most effective invasive things that can improve the appearance of cellulite. But do know that there are no guarantees. One thing that can happen, you know, is you, you can get some of the tissue sucked out in such a way that it leads to leads to a dimple, and then you have to go back and have cosmetic filler put into that area um, to make it not look strange. So it's it's hit or miss. It's expensive. It's invasive. It's not safe for everyone. Um, it's not safe for people who are over are obese or overweight, but it can be helpful and probably of the of the invasive things It's one of the more effective then another procedure that is um, somewhat invasive is subcision therapy and this is um, somewhat new, not entirely new. Um, it's been around for a while for, for treating acne scars. It involves um, uh, inserting needles under the skin or, can or cannula to break up some of the um, fibrous tissue, some of those fibrous tissue anchors, um, and then subsequently improve the appearance of the cellulite. This is, you know, like I said, has been done um, for acne scars to, to kind of break up some of the acne scar tissue with, with variable results. And and the same has been pursued for cellulite. The results are, are variable. It's operator dependent, so it's all in the expertise of the, the performing surgeon. And uh, you know, it just hasn't really been looked at uh, in large studies or studied that rigorously. Um, there's a lot of variability from provider to provider as to how it's done and the success rates. And we don't have a lot of objective data on long-term long-term sustained outcomes or overall safety. So it seems to be safe, um, but the efficacy of it is, is pretty hit or miss, and at best, it's kind of a subtle improvement. Subcision therapy is recommended for on, only for dimples that appear at rest. So if you only notice your cellulite when you're like um, squeezing it or like actively compressing the tissue, then subcision therapy is probably not going to be helpful, okay? It's really only only going to improve the cellulite that is that is that is noticeable when you're just standing there, for example. Another approach to the subcision therapy is to use a vacuum, a vacuum assisted subcision and um, you know, basically a little suction device um, as as the cannula is breaking up the tissue. But practitioners have reported um, single treatment efficacy, so just one treatment uh, being effective, and being effective outwards of 40 weeks and, and sustained improvement, and patients seem really happy with it. Um, so, you know, it, it has the potential to to make you happier or <laughs> to improve, you know, to make you feel like you're, you look better. How, how sustained it is after that, I don't know. Um, you know, I don't do these procedures, so I'm only going off of what I've I've heard at meetings and what I've read in the literature. Um, and I haven't seen any data that um, is really super well controlled. And I think it's really all uh, provider dependent 
and also it, it depends on on your overall body habitus and how the and how the cellulite appears at rest you know if it's if it's notable at rest or if it's only notable when you squeeze the tissue or sit down then um, in the realm of non-invasive body contouring devices, there is high frequency ultrasound. High frequency ultrasound has been used um, for treating tumors and kidneys and um, you know, uterine fibroids for, for quite some time. Uh, and again, it, it's non-invasive. Um, and there has been interest in developing devices um, for uh, treating cellulite with, with high frequency ultrasound. These devices include things like liposonics, um, NovaShape, as well as um, Ascent Ultra. Um, there are a variety of them. Overall, they appear to be safe um, and, uh, you know, they don't have any apparent risk of, uh, you know, damaging the deeper layer of the skin. You can have some redness, some bruising afterwards potentially but overall very safe. However, the outcomes, in my opinion, I don't know. I haven't seen anything that has me floored. Um, I can't appreciate really any improvement um, in any of the studies that I've, I've been presented with um, to make me convinced. But, but people seem relatively happy with the outcomes, meaning the patients. Um, satisfaction is anywhere from like 45% of people being happy with it to upwards of 80, 85%. So it's kind of hit or miss, and it's just really hard to predict if that's gonna be worth your time and money, and it can be really expensive. So I don't know, to me, it doesn't seem worth it, and I haven't seen anything that has me convinced otherwise, but um, that's an option. <laughs> Then there is radio frequency. Radio frequency includes things like thermage, for example. Um, and radio frequency um, makes use of the fact that tissues absorb um, energy and heat, heat um, differently based on their um, density. And so it targets uh, the fatty layers of the skin. In addition to thermage, there are things like VeliSmooth, um, Ascent, Tripolar, um, there are a variety of them. Radio frequency, like ultrasound, seems to be pretty safe. Uh, but again, like ultrasound, the results are really hit or miss. Um, patients seem maybe a little bit more happy with the thermage, but it's it's really not striking. Okay, I like ultrasound. I have not been blown away by the the by the results of. Um, of either radio frequency or ultrasound for for cellulite improvement, I think there's really nothing nothing convincing um, showing that that it, it helps substantially. But people seem somewhat happy with it. It is expensive, um, so you know at best you can get modest improvement. How long it's sustained? I haven't really seen many studies to to give me a good answer on that. So I genuinely can't tell you for sure if that's worth it. It doesn't seem like it, but people seem kind of happy with it when they first get it. So I don't know, it depends on how you want to spend your money, I guess. I wouldn't waste my money on it. Um, so that's, that's what I can say about that. Cryolipolysis is another uh, non-invasive body contouring approach that's relatively new and takes advantage of the fact that our fat cells are um, more sensitive to uh, the cooling temperatures than surrounding uh, surrounding tissues in the area. Cryolipolysis has been shown to be um, somewhat efficient at reducing the thickness of the fatty layer in um, areas affected by cellulite without um, causing any surrounding tissue, adverse tissue effects, damage to the overlying skin. So it appears to be really pretty safe. However, as far as efficacy, again, like um, radio frequency and ultrasound, we really don't have a lot of convincing data as to how effective it is. And again, not likely as helpful for cellulite that's not apparent at rest. Um, it's hit or miss, however, and uh, you know, patients seem, again, to be pretty happy with it. Um, like ultrasound and radio frequency, though, I, I really haven't seen much to, to blow me out of the water that this would be worth, worth your money. Um, but you might be happy with it, you know. You might find that you, you feel some improvement afterwards, and that, that might get you feeling better about it. Uh, how long that's going to last, I, I can't make any predictions, however. <laughs> Low-level laser light therapy is another um, FDA-cleared um, uh, non-invasive treatment approach for cellulite. 
And while low-level laser light um, appears to be safe, um, it, its efficacy is to be determined. Um, again, I haven't seen much that, to convince me that it's effective, but uh, it is cleared because it has been shown to be safe. Um, and you know, there are some some small uncontrolled studies that show uh, reducing that it reduces the thickness of the adipose tissue or the fatty tissue layer. Then there's something called extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy. This has been used, um, you know, started being used in the 80s to break up kidney stones. Um, and it basically applies shock waves to the tissue to kind of theoretically break up uh, some of those fibrous bands. It's been shown to be safe and somewhat effective, um, but again, like all of the other things, um, I kind of feel like I'm a broken record. The studies are really, really tiny um, and not super convincing, and they don't offer any information on long-term sustained benefit. Um, and so it's just hard for me to say for sure, but that is another approach. Um, I don't know how worth your money it is, uh, given the uh, paucity of data on, on sustained efficacy, but I think that, uh, in my opinion, it, it doesn't seem worth it. <laughs> Then there is this like fancy suction massage rolling tool that you'll see in a lot of med spas uh, called Endermology. Um, and you know, there are some variations on it. I think there are even some that are sold over the counter, uh, like something called a fat buster or whatever. It's like like these rolling massage things that, that deeply massage the tissue. And um, you know, sometimes they have a vacuum um, attachment to them to kind of suction at the tissue. And the thought here is that the massage could you know, maybe break up some of those fibrous bands, increase um, microcirculation in the area to improve the tissue health and give the tissue a, a better appearance. People seem happy with the results in the beginning, uh, but the outcomes are variable and not sustained. Um, and so what it seems as though this does is just cause some swelling, kind of like, you know, you've just, you've just beaten yourself up in the area a little bit. The, the tissues become swollen and as they're swollen, they kind of plump up and hide the appearance of the cellulite. So, um, you know, I, that's how I think that that works. Then there's something else called mesotherapy, which involves like injections of uh, a variety of botanicals and um, enzymes like hyaluronidase, phosphatidylcholine into the area, phosphatidylcholine to um, break up the fat, um, and then, you know, enzymes to digest some of the fibrous tissue, as well as a variety of like caffeines and, and um, just, uh, you know, a variety of, of of, of different things. I haven't seen, again, anything very convincing, and it's difficult because everybody's using their own separate cocktail of stuff. You know, it's not something that I do. Um, and so it, it seems like, like this uh, kind of hand, it seems a little, so it seems a little vague to me as to what exactly they're injecting and how safe it is. There, there are some risks with injecting some of these things. So, you know, there's a risk of infection. There is a risk of necrosis of the tissue. Um, so it seems too risky to me, and I haven't seen anything that convinces me that it does anything. So, uh, you know, I don't think it's worth it. Then everybody and their mother is gonna try and sell you a cellulite cream, okay? Honey, there is no cream that's gonna get rid of cellulite, point blank, okay? Uh, you know, caffeine creams, green tea creams, you know, creams, uh, you know, with the nasal drippings of a, you know, common marmoset, no. There is no cream that's going to take take away cellulite, all right? Preparation H, no. I mean, none of these things get rid of cellulite. You can't alter the architecture and um, anatomy of your subcutaneous fat tissue by putting a cream on the top layer of your skin, okay? It just simply does not work, and don't waste your money on any kind of cellulite cream, um, you know, or whatever. So they're all gimmicky, none of them work. You know, I'm sure somebody's gonna comment that they are using a cellulite cream that has, you know, completely, completely altered their body habitus, uh, you know, drastically, and that they've never been happier in their life. I'm not dismissing that. Um, you know, as Janice Joplin said, you know you've got it if it makes you feel good. So by all means, if you found a cream that does that, go for it. But I, I, I can't tell people to go buying a cream because 
it, it simply in my mind cannot work so then there are a variety of like vibrational machines i think these were even around you know as early as the, i want to say the 40s or the 50s maybe you know those it's like a it's like a band that you get in and it jiggles you back and forth <laughs> Um, uh, do they still have those? I know that they have these vibrational devices in a lot of gyms and spas to spot reduce cellulite. They seem to, to not be harmful, okay? They don't seem to cause any harm. Uh, and the theory behind them is that they increase blood circulation um, and, and uh, good tissue health. But they don't appear to be any better than, you know, just going to the gym and working out and being active. Um, so, you know, again, like I said in the beginning, while having cellulite does not mean that you are out of shape, overweight, um, it, eating a bad diet, it's, it simply occurs. It's likely, likely a result of your genetics and the fact that you are female, estrogens, um, things like that. Uh, you know, you might, it, it, it's not, people do see improvement and logical improvement uh, when they do uh, muscle muscle building exercises, strength training and endurance, endurance exercises, simply by virtue of the fact that they're reducing the fatty compartment and expanding the muscle compartment. So they're, they're reducing the part that bulges out and they're increasing the, the supportive framework underneath to kind of smooth it all out. So um, that's really the most logical uh, way to, to go about improving the cellulite, but it's not, not, not an overnight fix, obviously. And even that, even that might not get you, get you to, to where you're completely happy. So my, my take home advice for cellulite, I know it's hard, is to let it go. Um, there's really nothing that uh, in my mind that I've seen um, at meetings, uh, I've been talking with cosmetic dermatologists who do these uh, procedures, there's really nothing that offers sustained uh, substantial benefit to cellulite uh, that's, that's worth pursuing. Um, and I, so I think it's obviously a very frustrating area um, and so, you know, make peace with it, <laughs> um, if anything. So I hope this video was helpful in kind of going over all of the body contouring procedures. There are a lot out there. So hope that what I can tell you is helpful, um, but share your experiences below. I'd love to hear them. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.